Hello again, everyone. How is it going today? Happy Friday! Okay, we are back to uh, continue uh, working on the Hocus Pocus Sanderson house. This is what we have uh, so far. And we've got bag number six. Seven. Seven, sir. All right. Hope everyone's uh, day's been going well. Got some more uh, grinding done in Final Fantasy VI after the stream today. All prepared for, uh, well, two weeks from now. All right, let's see. Shift out these uh, pieces. Ooh, uh, gold, uh, gold whips. Howdy, Dark Jade. Yeah, it's uh, uh that was a that was a shock. That was a shock. He was not that old. All right, let's see. Okay. Starting out with our uh, dark brown. This is down for Lego Hour, brought to you by All Dragon Ham Company, TM. That is trademarked. That is trademarked. I mean, you better be careful on how you use that. We are a very litigious company. Very litigious. Considering uh, getting a trademark on uh, the word ham... Uh, forcing everyone in the world who uh, says the word ham uh, to to pay us a nominal fee of uh, $45. Howdy, Ice Oven, how's it going? You know, nominal fee. <laughs> oh, man, that would be, uh, that would be pretty awful, wouldn't it? Need like that uh, um, demolition man uh, swear find thing where where it's just recorders everywhere, and if you they uh, hear you uh, say the word ham, ding, forty five bucks to uh, all dragon ham company TM. See, you got to say TM too. That's that's required by law. Yeah, no, I mean, he was, uh, he was hugely, hugely influential. I still remember my first exposure to Dragon Ball Z before I even know, knew really what anime was, um, was when, uh, I visited, um... One of my sister, some of my sister's extended family in uh, France, and uh, some of their the the young kids in that that family uh, were watching uh, Dragon Ball Z, as it was there. Awful is when the IT de team decides it's a good idea to mess around with some servers, knock out a switch that contains a server that your uh, HRIS system is on right at the end of the day when people go to clock out. All while having a fever. You need a drink. I'd recommend water. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh that's 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 a feat. That is a feat. I I have been party to some some uh IT uh mess ups before, uh but not sure that particular flavor. I mean, I did contribute one time to servers going down, and like not just servers, but like the network slowing to a crawl, mail basically being non-functional uh, for multiple days. 
that was fun. That was fun. It's brilliance at its finest. Luckily, it wasn't actually my fault. It was my actions, but not my fault. See, it's all fault. All network saboteur. I had been on the job for like two weeks, if that. Um, help desk, service desk uh, position. And... Uh, one of the, uh, the other people pulled a computer out of, uh, storage and was like, here, go set this up upstairs for, uh, for this new intern starting. Um, so I go to do that. You know, they didn't tell me to, to format it or anything like that. It was, it was according to them all ready to go. Um, just pulled straight out of storage. Um, turns out it was infected with a virus and, uh, that virus just decided... Uh, you know, we all over the uh, the network. Difference between sabotage and hilarious bungling generally comes down to intent. Yes, yes. Howdy, Nolden. How's it going? And thank you very much for those bits. Yeah, it was uh. It was a thing. I mean, like, as soon as I realized what was going on in that computer, I shut it down. Like, I just, uh, I pulled the, uh, the network cable and shut it off. Um, but <laughs> the damage was done. The damage was done. Pretty good all in all. That is excellent. All right, got a skeleton to uh, make here. There we go, and the skull. I'm glad that they are they are using the uh, the classic uh, skull again. Um, there, there's like a an evil looking skull that they have as well, uh, print. Um, but it doesn't quite fit the uh, the standard happy happy look for uh, minifigs. So there we go. Uh, loafing around. Look at this guy just just sitting around doing nothing. It's terrible. Not getting any work done. All right, and that is going to fit right up here. A little uh, projection off the uh, the top. Such a lazy bones. Yep, that's you tomorrow. If only it could be you right now, right? I mean, I, I imagine, you know, being sick, uh, you know, you've, you've lost a lot of weight, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> All right, so we got a couple uh, one by two by five uh, bricks, and we have some uh, stickers to uh, put on them, these two here. But, of course, I'm not putting them on. All right. Uh, let's see. I need a two by two uh, tiles. It goes right there, and uh, that one goes right. Wait a second. Where does it go? Ah, right there. There we go. All right. Howdy, Red Hyena. How's it going? Happy Friday, indeed. All right. Another axle and axle connector. Get that right in between there. All right, a wheel of some sort. This 
license that seems to have a lot of cool detail packed in. Yeah, they do a really good job with the uh, these license sets of uh, of just getting a massive amount of details and references uh, put in. It's pretty cool. Always makes me excited to uh, see what they will come up with next. All right, and that goes right there. What are the pieces inside the cauldron? Um, do I have a set of tweezers around here? I do not have a set of tweezers around here. I don't know where they are. I lent them to my mother a while back. I'm not sure if I ever got them back. Um, it's actually uh, the... There we go. Ice cream piece. Scoops of ice cream. If the, the camera would focus. There we go. Also fun to use as, uh, like, smoke and stuff like that. So it kind of gives uh, the look of, like, you know, bubbling away, boiling uh, liquid there. Uh, it's not Legos, uh, Tom Brown. It's Lego brand building blocks. Building bricks. That's, you gotta, gotta get it right. <laughs> Alright, let me get out the minifigs, put them aside, because we are going to be uh, doing some furniture up here. There we go. Alright, at an angle. Move those pieces. There we go. Alright. Corner. One by one uh, corner panel piece and a two by two corner tile right there. <coughs> now, it wasn't a pain. It was just uh, um, a question of uh, what's going to be easier. <laughs> That's all. Alright. Green one by two tile. Make our yeah, bookcase here. And on the other side, let's see, a red, dark blue, and then a black 1x2 tile. There it is. I do like this way of doing uh, shelves. Bookshelves. Right beneath the window. Although it does partially cover up the window, which is a little... annoying. I like it when it's uh, kind of like cleanly... Um, not, you know, like... Just comes up to the windowsill kind of thing. There we go. There's a lot of flex in this uh, plate, unfortunately. All right. We make a mop with the mop top and a 6L bar. With stop. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think I'd probably generally use like a 4L bar or something, but. There you go. Stick that on that single stud. Classic Fabuland uh, broom. Again, another Fabuland piece that's still around. Pretty cool. Go ahead and lean that into the corner. Oh, actually, it, they want it up like that. There we go. Alright, one by two log bricks. Dark red and dark green two by four bricks. Yeah, 
And we get some gold one by one. Wait, flower pieces? Yes. Flower pieces for the uh, bed posts. Get into the stud, please. Thank you. All right, turning back around. So that's going to be on the end. Get our uh, three pillows. Move this out of the way a little bit, since uh, I need a lot of one-by-one -one tiles. Okay, lime green, dark green. Does it go all the way to the end? There we go. And then pink and magenta, actually dark pink. Sword, thank you very much for the resubscription. How's it going? I really do appreciate that. We are working on a, uh, a bed right now. Three-person bed. Now red and dark red. And 100 bits from Anghamran. Got a uh, hype train going. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate that. Lego time indeed. Okay, nothing on the... Nothing on the edges here. But that... It's in right, right up against the uh, cabinet there. Yes. And Preskich subscribing. Thirty-eight months, thirty-eight months streak. Very nice. How's it going? Thank you very much. All right, now for a, a vacuum cleaner, which is a uh, pretty neat. I I have not seen. Lego make a vacuum cleaner of this sort before. Sixty-nine percent. Oh, I got sixty-eight percent on my end. <laughs> it's not quite nice. It's getting there. It's not quite. <laughs> Almost. I don't know that it's possible to get that one percent though. Go. And put that right on there. Oh, that's handy. The uh, the hole on the uh, the loop um, allows for the the hinge to uh, to go there. I n I never would have thought about that. Ten bits. Let's try. Yeah. Well, uh, that did it. I got it to sixty nine percent. Howdy, Crimson Clover. How's it going? And then the power cord. There is nothing for that to actually connect to, so it is not going to connect to anything. But uh, it makes a pretty neat uh, vacuum cleaner. You're eepy? <laughs> Sleepy, I assume. 
I am pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. Let's get that right there in the back there. Okay, now for a barrel with a candle on it. Always a good idea. Always put your, your candles on uh, old wooden barrels. That is, that is wisdom, wisdom for you. Is it an Electrolux? -like because nothing sucks like a, an Electrolux? Uh, I wouldn't know. I don't know anything about Electrolux. Other than what you just told me. Which I will have to take your word for. Alright, one by two to one by two downward bracket. Dark brown, a one by two plate. One by two, uh, one by one to one by one upward bracket. A pair of one by one plates with bars. One by two curved slope. And a telescope piece right there. And then a pair of broom pieces. In dark brown, too. There we go. I think that's uh, like a pair of uh, brooms, or supposed to be a pair of brooms, kind of held in there. Looking forward to Adventures in Arcane Space tomorrow. Me too. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, um, absolutely slaughtering the players. I mean, I mean. <laughs> All right, spare parts. Uh, we have a one by one tiles in uh, magenta, dark pink, red, dark red. Dark green, lime green, one by one plate in beige, uh, gray Technic connector, a um, one by one brown plate with bar, uh, and a gold whip. Bits for the hype train! Thank you very much for all of those bits, Unghamarand. I really do appreciate it. All right, bag number eight. Just missed it. That's ah, okay. It's a thought that counts. There we go. Get a nice number for the Orient Express. <laughs> there we go. All right. So first of all, a lot of uh, dark brown pieces here. It looks like they are going to be over here. We need a, a long skeletal leg. So skeletal tolly legs, that's what these are. Um, a one by one cylinder plate with underbar. A one by one cylinder brick with some printing on it. And a black flame piece, which I think it's the first time they've done that. Oh no, no, that's, that's not actually black, it's actually trans black. Neat, all right. So, that is a uh, that's trans black there, and there is the the printing on that cylinder brick. I'm guessing this is a candle of some sort, like a black candle. Okay, camera, you can focus. Want to focus again? Thank you. And that goes three from the edge, one from that edge. There we 
go, right there. Pair of brown candlesticks. Medium nougat angle connector. Two by two brown tile. And that is going to have 13. Let's see. Yeah, so a little placard about the candle, which is interesting because it uses a, a standard uh, candle uh, in the image, but not there. I'm guessing because I, I'm guessing they cannot print on these uh, pieces. They're too small. Certainly they wouldn't be able to get that detail on it. All right, another pair of stanchions. Or another stanchion. I like the way this is uh, done, though. Looks really good. Right there, and right there. There we go. All right. Turn it around here, and we get dark brown. One by six tiles. Another pair of 1x6 tiles here, and here. There we go. Okay, dark green leaves there and there. Sand green 1x1 one one tile top clip right under there. More leaves here. There we go. So looking pretty good on that uh, that side, and another sand green one by one tile with clip. Some good stories around the Orient Express. Agatha Christie's murder on the Orient Express was uh, unexpectedly heart-wrenching. Yeah, that was a really well-done uh, story. What a real thing could make for a good one on a, a custom free-handed uh, whatever sawmill build. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty nice uh, uh, water wheel. All right, so we have a green vine. Get that right in there, and a dark green vine right over here. There we go. All right, now nine one by six tiles along the front. Could build a sawmill for the medieval town with the uh, rest of the sets, like the blacksmith. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely the kind of thing where, you know, building more buildings for it would be really neat. Um, some people have been complaining about the, uh, the lack of certain things. Like... Some of the people were, were saying, um, we're talking about it like, we knew what they planned, but, like, that's that's not how, uh, 
product development works, you know? When you, when you prototype something, like, you know, when they prototype a new, a new car line, does everything that they, they think about putting into the car uh, in the prototype get into the final thing? No, of course not. People complaining? I would have never guessed. I know. Like, I don't know what is, like, I don't know what, what went into the decisions on what to include and what not to include and stuff like that. I honestly don't really care. Like, it, that's... That's like internal stuff. I don't need to know that that kind of thing. I mean, I'm curious, but I don't need to know. It doesn't really matter. And we never would have known. We never would have known if if those pictures hadn't leaked, which you know, one of the re you know, people were were saying like why doesn't Lego want these things out? Well, here is one of the reasons why. Because like if you show the uh, the town square to people who uh, didn't see the leaks, they're like, "Wow, that is really cool!" And I'm talking about Lego fans. You show them to show it to people who saw the leak, then they're like, "Oh, but the leak had this and that and the, the other thing." Boy, howdy! I wonder why Lego doesn't want the uh, images leaked. So weird. <laughs> But anyway, so um, I kind of wonder if, like, some of that got decided to uh, put into a different set, maybe. You know, like, maybe they're going to do another uh, town village set or, or something like that down the road. And they're like, let's, let's not, you know, let's not do everything with this first one. Let's, let's do, uh, let's save some things. And that's not, and like, I know what some of those people would say to that kind of thing, like, um, oh, they're just trying to gouge us. And it's like, no, <laughs> not at all. It's very silly. Very, very silly. All right, one by six tile. And a one by two pleat. There we go. And that is going to clip on there. I mean, I, I for one, am really happy with the uh, with the medieval market village. And and some people were like complaining about me defending Lego when I was just pointing out how it would work if Lego did put in some of the things. Like, like people are complaining. You know, it doesn't have the cows, it doesn't have the horse. You go onto a pick a brick, those things run like four to six, you know, like five to six bucks. Um, so that's, that's kind of what you'd be looking at uh, as an increase in price. But I suppose it's a good thing that none of those people ever complain about price. Right? <laughs> uh, anyway, that's what we're going to be building next week, and I am I am excited to get to it. It has a lot of detail, and I am really looking forward to it. But it did remind me of, uh, like, like talking about the water wheel did remind me of uh, um, something that I, I would like to see uh, Lego return to, and that is uh, idea books. Uh, it's a little hard with, uh, with not a whole lot of um, individual product identity these days, but, uh, like, original product identity. Um, it used to be that... Uh, you know, you'd get a Lego set, and the back of the box would have, like, alternate models. You know, sometimes you'd have pictures in the instructions, but they, they, there weren't uh, 
instructions for those things. And the reason they stopped that, because, like, the early uh, Star Wars sets had that. But the, the reason they stopped is because uh, at least one of their licensors, one of the, the companies that they, they licensed uh, IP from, didn't like that and didn't want that on the on those sets. Uh, I suspect it's Disney, but I don't know for sure. And it's a shame, because they, they just they removed it from everything. Anyway, spare parts. A, a trans black uh, flame, which is very cool. Uh, black 1x1 cylinder plate with underbar, and a uh, gold 1x1 plate flower. But there was a... Um, there was an old Lego idea book, and in one of the castle sections, uh, they had, like, a sawmill and, like, powered by a uh, water wheel and a water wheel powered uh, forge. It was pretty neat. Pretty neat uh, designs and stuff. And, like, I love licensed sets like this and stuff like that, but I do think that there is a... There has been kind of a loss of creativity, the, the built-in creativity of LEGO, where people don't think about it as much as they used to. And that is a consequence of the licensed sets. There's so much more um, where people just build what the set says and, and that's it. I kind of think that's a shame. Uh, let's see. Friction pin. That is a one by one cross axle. Oh, there it is. Uh, orange, bright orange leaf. I mean, I've always been a bigger fan of uh, making my own things than strictly using what LEGO makes. At the very least, yeah, I gotta supplement it. And there's a lot of people who, uh, like, they, they'll, they just buy instructions online from what other people get. And it's, it's just kind of like, it feels like a... Like a loss of the, the creativity inherent in the product. I say that considering putting some designs up myself. If I ever get around to it. <laughs> there we go. And that slips right in there. Okay, second one. Couple uh, one by one tile slopes. There it is. Another leaf. And our clip. There we go. Another corner slope. And a leaf on top. Yeah. 
Stupid vines. And that one right there. These vines would make great uh, pieces for like sn snapper saw plants and stuff. <clears throat> okay, get those on. Turn the house this way. And dark brown. Two by four there, and one by two tile slopes. Now a red 4L axle, black number one connector with a black friction pin, and a red number one connector. There we go. Four by four frame. This is for the uh, the chimney. Uh, one by four uh, plate. There is a local uh, brick fair going on right now. Uh, I think it's down in Fredericksburg. Which is a little far from me. Um, to go for, for that sort of thing. At least not without, you know, without staying down there. And don't really have much to display anyway. But... I might at some point have something to display. All right, then that gets right there. There we go. All right, a friction pin with 2L axle in black. A white one by two plate with Technical on the underside, one by two bar, and a pair of bar holders with clips. Howdy, Bahamut. How's it going? Hey, uh, no worries. So, kind of a satin trans pink color. It's pretty neat. If it would focus. Not used for a lot of things, but... You were at the store, it took more time than you were planning? That is unfortunate when that happens. But hey, at least you're back, and hopefully you got what you needed. That is going to go right here. There we go. All right, build the rest of the, uh, the chimney here. Kind of surprised this wasn't built around it because we got to get it down around that. All right, pair of two by two corner plates, one by two round end plates, dark gray one by one plates.
no longer going to be selling Magic the Gathering set stuff? Well, that's, that's a shame. I have to get it from somewhere else. Somewhere else. All right. There we go. All right. Next up, dark gray one by two plates. Came up in another uh, Discord, and uh, it is it is kind of uh, funny to think about how long it has been since I stopped playing. Like, I can guarantee that there are a lot of uh, Magic the Gathering fans uh, playing the game right now who weren't even born, weren't even conceived when I stopped playing. Like, 27 years. I'm old, is what I'm saying. Alright, there we go. We have our chimney. And... Bring that right down there. I should probably go this way. So we have uh, rising and falling uh, flames, magical flames coming out of the chimney. All right, turn it around here and back in the side, and we have one by one by threes. I think you were introduced about uh, 2008, 2009. Ah, pandemic collecting. That's... <laughs> that pandemic is, was, like, as, as bad as a pandemic was. Um... At least it did get a lot of people to, you know, like, embrace their hobbies and stuff. I think that's a good thing. Uh, Red Hyena, it is uh, pretty popular. Uh, I remember enjoying it. I don't remember much about it. I mean, it is suitable for younger audiences, so don't go in expecting, like, you know, serious dark magic type stories, but uh, I remember it being fun. Interesting using the trap door piece for the uh, for the bed, top of the bed. And we have a little bat. We can go uh, sit up there. And a candlestick with a telescope on the underside. White in the middle. Tan on one side and a black on the other, and some flames. I could not talk about the uh, the sequel if it did get one. I I, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> okay, so candlestick, and that goes. 
right there. Seems dangerous to, like, climb up the ladder and, and get right, you know, have a candlestick right there in your face, but, you know. <clears throat> what do I know? It's not like I'm an architect, right? <laughs> okay, on this side... Two one by three plates, a one by twelve, and a second one by three. Whole bunch of one by two tile slopes. One by eight tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, right there. Uh, I have not really looked into it, uh, Slarian. I just haven't been in the... Uh, mood for Stellaris in a while. I, I think I got my fill out of it. Like, I played it a lot. Um, which is no, in no indication that it's a bad game. It's a good game. It's just like... You know, I mean, I put in over a thousand hours. <laughs> I got my money's worth. I absolutely got my money's worth. Um... Just it doesn't it doesn't grab me anymore. I don't know. And howdy, how's it going? All right, so that is it for that bag. We got a one by one plate flower in gray, gray one by one plate, white one by one uh, cylinder plate with hollow stud, uh, brown swirl ice cream piece, and a trans orange candle flame. I mean, I'm all for, you know, people continuing to uh, enjoy it and everything. By no means trying to take that away or anything like that. I just haven't been in the mood for that kind of uh, gameplay. Uh, that, Crusader Kings 2, Crusader Kings 3, haven't really uh, felt the urge to, to try out, like, Victoria 3. I don't know, just... Hasn't been, hasn't been a, of interest to me these days. Would not surprise me if... Uh, I do get a hankering to go back at some point, though. Not played Stellaris in a long while. Kind of got, for lack of a better word, tired of the a million DLC model. That's understandable. I mean... I... It, it's like... Oops. Not that. I understand getting tired of it. Um, I, I think that it is a good overall... Like, I don't mind that they, they do that. Um, I think it's fantastic that they are continuing to develop the game over time. I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, but it's also just like, uh, you know, it, it, it keeps it fresh for new players too. Like, uh, um someone getting into Stellaris right now is still going to have a, a brand new game to play kind of thing, and they'll, they're going to get brand new game experience. Um, whereas people who've played it a lot before uh, may not necessarily get the same out of it just because they've, they've you know, they've 
had a lot of that already. And that's fine. But it, it like, I, I think it's, it's way better that uh, they're continuing to support the game and develop it and make make changes and make it ex new and exciting and stuff like that. Are you crazy because you never watched Hocus Pocus? No, not at all. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've only seen it once. Not arguing that it's bad, just saying that you're not interested in $20 packs or a game you already sunk a bunch of money into. Yeah, I mean, there comes a point where you feel that you've gotten your money's worth and a new developments aren't as... Uh, don't have the same value for you as earlier ones. That's kind of what I'm getting at, too, is... Um, you know... But at the same time, like, that's one of the good things that they do, is that they do still put out core game mechanic changes for free. Um, and that's something that I appreciate. You know, they'll make big changes, and you can get a lot of that for free. That's pretty good. You know, I, I think it's a, a good idea for, for people to get in, you know, get what they want out of it, play it for a while, uh, and then when they're done, say, all right, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to put more money into this game because uh, I got I got what I want out of it. You don't want to think how much you spent on CK2? It's a value judgment, which is individual for everyone. If you think it's worth it, it's worth it, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, have I seen the, the second one? I have not. I have not seen the second one. How was the, uh, the Cultist Tower? Um, getting out was fun. It was fine. If I had prepared more, i.e., like, read up and reminded myself of stuff, it would have been easier, but it was fine. Makes level 90 magic noises. No! No! What happened? Uh, well, I did have an attempt at the boss that failed because uh, he murdered himself. Um, it was very rude of him. I'm the one supposed to be do doing the murdering, not him. And he murdered himself. And I did not appreciate that. Uh, I became thankful for the uh, autosave every time you uh, transition screens, because uh, once I did finally defeat him, uh, rasping him to death, of course, um, a, a level 90 magic guy decided to uh, uh, murder the uh, party on the way down. When you watched me putting out the uh, LP for the Kingdom of Dragonia first run, that was inspiring. When your first uh, playthrough Stellaris was a vastly different game by then. So much had changed. Yeah, I know. It's like... I, I, I have had some people, like, come into some of those types of uh, um, videos and be like, Oh my god, you're so dumb for not doing this thing that didn't exist then. And I'm like, that thing didn't exist then. And they're like, oh... Oh, I'm sorry. Most of them were would actually, you know, genuinely apologetic. It was just like, how do you not realize that the game uh, is very, very different? Makes uh, Magic Master noises. Hey, the Magic Master is fine. I just had to keep healing him. That's all. Okay. No, you will not kill yourself. It's my job. Howdy, Shield of Hope. How's it going? Like I said, like, the, uh, um... The nature of doing LPs is that oftentimes once I'm done with a game, 
Uh, I don't... And, and this is this is for Final Fantasy VI more so than, uh, like, Crusader Kings 2 or uh, Stellaris or something like that. Um, once I finish the LP, uh, there's an element in my brain that's like, well, done, Not don't need to uh, think about this game anymore. Um, and I can oftentimes very much forget about details that I should know and have known. Uh, a lot of it depends on the the game itself. Like um, I, I definitely remember a heck of a lot more out of about Final Fantasy IV because I have played that so much more than uh, any of the others. But um, yeah, I mean. I forget things. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, so um, it tries to Ultima, but it has no MP. So it can't can't Ultima. That's that's why it is it is the the long but safest way of murdering him. And it is long. And you have to make sure that he doesn't kill himself. Which So the thing is is like I, I looked it up and it is actually harder to do that properly in the Pixel Remaster because um, in the original if you if you do not cast anything on him, he never barrier changes. And if he never barrier changes, he's immune to everything. He's not healed by anything, but he's immune to everything. So that was one of the reasons why I had so much trouble, is because uh, I, I, like, throughout it, I was thinking to myself, I do not remember having to heal him. And it's because I didn't need to in the original. They changed it, so that he always barrier changes. And that's different. So even if I... did remember things, like, <laughs> they changed it. Alright, so a lot of uh, rickety boards here at very odd angles. You're finally free! Woohoo! Yeah, but so, like, if you have re-raise, you've done a ton of stuff already. Like, you're, you're, you're basically doing the, uh, um, uh, Kefka's Tower, like, you're, you're, you're doing the, the Cult of Kefka as, like, the last thing before you, um, you go to Kefka's Tower itself. Uh, and I never like to do that. I don't like doing that. Because I like getting Strago and I like getting the Economizer as kind of as quickly as I can. Or the Soul of Thamasa, as it is now. No, it's not the Economizer, it's the Magic Box. That's what it was. The original. Still remember when uh, Final Fantasy VII came out on the uh, PS1, you ignorant was like, when the hell did Final Fantasy IV, V, VI come out? Because you'd played them on NES and SNES. Yeah, I I knew about it because uh, there was a, like a Nintendo Power article about the Final Fantasies we didn't get here around the time that Final Fantasy uh, VI came out here as Final Fantasy III. Man, I, can, I was incensed at that point. <laughs> I was like, I want these other games, damn it. Gem box, that's it. Thank you. Right, turn that around, and that goes right on there. There we go. Okay, turn it back around.
right in the middle, yes. All right. But yeah, like, uh, um... In the original, like, he, he would he would just uh, keep blasting himself for no damage. And... but now they have a barrier change. You've had re-raise glitch you to the point where you had to restart the game on Switch. Huh. Yeah, but interestingly enough, Red Hyena, um, that has, like, gone back uh, and... Um, become a a legit Mario game, like that went back and became a legit Mario game in uh, Japan after that. Because that's where Shy Guys and Birdo came from, and those have been kind of staples in uh, Super Mario ever since. Yeah, it was a good game. I mean, I was terrible at it, but... <laughs> then again, I am, I'm, I'm generally terrible at those types of games. Because Japan thought the Japanese version of uh, Super Mario 2 was too hard for the American audience. Yeah, pretty much. One re-raise glitch was you had a re-raise on your entire party, and they dropped to zero, re-raise activated. Did you have the fast forward on at the, at the time, Bahamut? After repeatedly not making it past the first stage? Yeah, yeah. I, I have not been able to get very far in that one. You don't think you did? Because I've noticed weird things where... Um, Attacks trigger on the fast forward that shouldn't trigger um, without fast forward. So I wonder if that was what was going on. But I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm I'm definitely annoyed that you can't uh, skip through a bunch of uh, um, packs in the on the Velt at all. You have to go through them all. Seventy-two months. Thank you very much for that. A resubscription, Sealin. Has it been six years already? That is insane. I appreciate it. The first level, one one. Yeah. No, I, I was never very good myself. Like I've never beaten uh I've never beaten any Super Mario game. Legit, like without save states, I should say. I haven't had anything like that happen. I have uh, repeatedly learned not to uh, uh, let um, get this on right here. Not to uh, allow the um, auto battle to do slot because it really likes Joker Doom. It really likes Joker's Doom. You've never beaten the first one, Super Mario Brothers, without warps? Can't remember how far you got, but it was either World 3 or 4. Yeah, I mean, I can't get very far without warps either. 
But I've never even beaten it, I don't think. Well, I've beaten Super Mario 1. I should say, I think. Now that I think about it. But I haven't beaten any of the others. Alright, flip it over, and we have a chain right here. And a chain right... Four, five, all right. Okay, right here. There we go. Get some, uh... Inverted curved slopes in dark gray there. There we go. Okay. There we go. They don't produce these uh, peak slopes very much anymore, which is kind of annoying. Um, so it's kind of neat to ha get them in uh, dark brown. But that's partly because they, they, they don't like making um, roofs with these pieces that much anymore. Now they like to make them out of uh, plates and stuff, which admittedly is, is less part-intensive. All right, spare parts. We got a red uh, friction half pin and a two um, 5L, I think they're 5L chains. So it might be 6L. Yeah, 6L chains, not 5L. In black. That's kind of neat. All right, let's put this to the side because uh, it is about time do some minifigs before we get started on the roof. Which is not on fire, in case you're wondering. Alright. Let's go ahead and get our sheets out. We are going to be starting with the Lego Movie 2. Alright. There we go. Alright. Let's get my dice. Alright. Let's see. D6. Three. I'm, I've am i been pulling consistently from the middle, so I'm going to re-roll that. It's middle again. One. Alright. So this row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, see, like, I barely pulled from that one. All right, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and start a prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig pack? Let's go. Get your predictions in. Uh, Seal of Mortar, your D20 says 5. That would be the, um, uh, the crayon costume person. Bahamut's D20 says 9. That would be, um, I think that's like Popstar Wild Style or something. I think that's wild style. 16 for me, that would be uh, Dorothy again. So go ahead and get your predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? Let me get my uh, timer all ready. Go ahead and pull out the uh, the next bag of parts as well, just so that that's all ready. All right, about a minute to go. I get your uh, predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? There's a lot of musical-related uh, uh, characters in this set. Now that I'm thinking about it, like you got that one, that one, that one, and that one. 
between seven, nine, eleven, fifteen, you basically have an entire pop in. Yeah, that's what I was uh, I was thinking. Like, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. They all have magenta microphones, which does make me wonder if the movie had them all as a uh, as like a, a a band or something, or competing singers or something. I don't know. I haven't seen either movie. I know the second one just like bombed or something. All right, predictions are just about closed. And there we go. All right. Big bets coming in late. You love this game? <laughs> it's pretty fun. All right, Matt Martin, have a good rest of your night. Thank you very much for coming on out. All right. And go. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Uh, 4.83. Uh, it is the crayon. It is the crayon. Congratulations, Seelan. Your dice were correct. 4.83 seconds. Just so happened that literally the very first piece that I fell was the crayon. <laughs> Is that a record? It might be a record. It might be a record. Like you're definitely getting down to a point where uh, time is more down to how long it takes me to move my hands around and stuff. You would have, you would have laughed if I'd been wrong. That would have been uh, that would have been good. Let's choose that prediction. All right, within 20 seconds, complete that prediction. Uh, Red Hyena, Kinshir, and Crimson Clover getting the hams. Very nice. Cetria, Seelan, and Isavan going for 20 to 50. Prescott, Shield of Hope, and Anghamaran to go in for 50 to 60. And Bahamut going for no. Here we go, 1.1 seconds later. And we have it. Would be very interesting to uh, compare uh, compare some of the the quickest uh, times. There we go. Ooh. Uh, also, let's let's have a little fun here. Where did that piece go? Um, there it is. All right. There we go. Flame not included. This is our, our second uh, uh, crayon person. Very, very cool. <laughs> All right. So that is our second one. All needs to do one-hand challenges to uh, hover on the uh, start-stop command. Really go for the speedrun strats. <laughs> I um, the 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 bigger challenge is building in a bag. Uh, I I'm, I'm pretty sure I showed it off one at one point. I don't know where it is right now. Uh, I don't. I think I moved it. Um, but small uh, small sets. Um, where all of the parts are contained in one single bad bag, building those. That's pretty fun. It's actually pretty fun. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, get on a Series 8. Okay. Here is our hanger. And we are pulling from the bottom. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a new prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig pack? Go, get your predictions in. Let's see, my D20 says four. All right, so that would be uh, the uh, cowgirl. Uh, Bahamut says seven, which would be the ski lady. And uh, you got a five. 
That would be the um, football player. Source of the Santa army. Yeah. It's one of the more disappointing figures just because it's so easy to get Santas, honestly. How long have I been doing the Guess a Minifig game? You really dig it? Um, for quite a while. Uh, we started out just doing one, and I slowly uh, built up a collection of uh, sets to do. Um, and it was all because I had an old box that I hadn't opened, uh, Series 5. Never got the Golden Pirate. Oh, okay. All right, 50 seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. Well, at some point, Duke Darkwood, uh, hit me up for some of the ones that you don't have, and if they're ones that I'm willing to uh, spare extras of, uh, you know, I can sell them to you, and I'll sell them below market price. Well, part of it, Red Hyena, is is just knowing Lego pieces, like like really knowing Lego pieces. Ah, Duke Darkwood. So you 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 only have seven Santas. So you want more? Got it. All right, understood. Understood. All right, predictions are just about closed. Let me go ahead and reset my timer. There we go. Your first D twenty roll was a nat twenty. Nice. All right, and go. If you rolled your d20, uh, I don't know, and and said it. I I, I missed uh, I missed that Salarian. Uh, that is that is that is an interesting piece. Okay, sixteen point six. We have another conquistador. I felt the armor. One of the things you've been thinking is going through your uh, magic cards and going to the hobby shop and seeing if they know anyone has cards you want. Do they have, like, uh, um, like weekend sessions where you can where, you, where people compete and play and stuff like that? Do they have that kind of space? I know some of the ones around here at least used to. I don't know if they do now. You only have seven Santas from the collectible minifig lines. You have at least two or three more uh, from Christmas sets. Well, no, I understand that. You, but but you obviously need more, right? I mean, only seven. You, you got to have more, more than that, right? Right? Wink, wink. <laughs> All right, let's choose that prediction. That was once again sixteen point six. I felt the armor. Let's complete that prediction. There we go. And let's see, Red Hyena, Seal and Mortar, and Kinshir getting the hams. Very nice. Ice Oven, Shield of Hope going for 20 to 50. Press Kitchen on Hamran going for 50 to 60. And Bahamut going for no. They don't, but they, you know they uh, sell magic cards and you think they have people who sell them cards? Yeah, I mean, if, you're, if your goal is to trade away cards that you have uh, for cards you want... Yeah, it might be good. So one of the downsides of this uh, um, early line is that this is a printed piece as opposed to a colored piece, which does mean that the, uh, the paint will uh, flake off eventually. But yeah, so I felt the uh, the armor piece, which, oops, is a pretty unique shaped piece. Um, number one, you've got this pretty thick height to it. If the camera will focus, there we go. So, I mean, that's pretty thick. And you've got you got this texture here. You got this shape here with these little flaps, the round corners, and of course, you know, if you're if you're feeling it, you can you can get your fingers in there. So 
pretty unique feel to that piece. But definitely a good uh, conquistador to go to with uh, older conquistador pieces. Minifigs from the uh, Pirates line. There we go. And there we go. I love that face. It's a good face. So I'm pretty happy to get uh, more of this uh, minifig. Uh, just boring red uh, feather, but definitely a guy who would stand out among the other uh, Lego Conquistador figure minifigs. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and mark him down. All right. So final set for tonight is going to be our Series 25. All right, so uh, 1d6 to see what uh, row we pull from. Yeah, it's a really good figure. I'm a big fan of the the um, historical and fantasy figures. Uh, so that is one. So top row and d12. No, I need 10. D10. All right, five. So, one, two, three, four, five. All right. So, let's go ahead and start a prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig box? So, I'm going to make a guess, then I will weigh it. And if neither of those are wrong, then the result will be no. I am going to scan it as well, but that will be uh, later. All right, so you can use a D12 because there's only 12. Uh, let's see. Bahamut's D20 says two, so that would be the uh, the gamer girl. Uh, Salarian needs to re-roll. Seelan, uh, three. That would be Basil the Batlord. Three on a D12. Basil the Batlord again. D12 says two, so that is the, uh, the gamer girl. I got 11, which would be the Barbarian. Kinshire has a 10. That would be Train Kid. And again, so half of the uh, the figures are in the top. So as soon as we get six total figures, different figures, uh, we'll be pulling those out and going to the bottom row. Not a rogue AI has five. That would be Goat. That would be the Goat Herder. I will get the mushroom. I got the mushroom last time. It is possible. They do randomize the uh, um, the order uh, on each level, layer. So they're not all grouped. All right, 30 seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. So I will not be timing myself with this one. You took a snapshot of your very first role being in that 20. Where should you post that in Discord for posterity? You can put it in the the um, uh, toy box because that was the... Uh, um, the it's Lego related. Goats, he got all? Yes, the greatest of all time. All right. Predictions are closed. All right, so first of all, I am going to... Uh, oh, I need to set up the uh, the weight guide... There we go. All right. Sounds like there's multiple small pieces. Maybe something big. I'm going to go with the train kit again. I'm going to go with the train kit again. So I'm thinking it is the train kit. 
All right, so Train Kid is 21.72 grams or thereabouts. 21.31, okay, so... Uh, that is eliminating quite a few of these. Yep, that's Train Kid. Okay. Train Kid. So, if I'm correct, then this is going to be the guess. Oh, the, the you meant the knight the, rather than the uh, Conquistador, the um, the vampire guy. Yeah, Basil the Batlord from the, uh, the, the Fright Knights. Okay, so um, let's see if it is the uh, Train Kid. That is Train Kid. All right. You can see the piece in there. There we go. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, choose that prediction. That was yes with a guess. Let's complete that prediction. Oh, I should have scanned the, uh, the underside, but... I'll go ahead and do that. In a second. All right, let's see. Uh, Red Hyena, Crimson Clover, and Bahamut getting the hams. Very nice. Big, big payout. Awesome. Shield of Hope, Ice Sovereign, Seal and Mortar, Anghamaran going for yes with weight. And Cetria, Kinshir, and Preskich going for no. They ever decide uh, if codes mean anything? Yes, they do, because... No, I'm, I'm, I'm using the scale because uh, it makes it more interesting. If you have the, the large codes here, rather than the small codes, this you can read. This can be read. It's not a QR code, it's a matrix code. Ham redistribution complete. Come on. Camera. Focus. Focus. Seriously. Camera. There we go. All right. Uh, so... If you go to uh, brickbank.app, they have a uh, CMF predict. And... And we'll go ahead and do this. Come on, focus. This worked before. There we go. Yep, prediction, train kid. There we go. So, yeah, if so if if you're if you're at the store, these codes work. The small codes do not. Um pretty sure the small codes were the uh initial run uh and then they changed it uh partway through. Because the first ones that I got were um, those uh, small codes. So that's why I'm not using the code, because that is at this point it's guaranteed for these. Uh, um, these. This is a pretty neat piece. Uh, so... This number down here. This is a uh, production code. 749S3. It's indicating where it was uh, packaged and indicating where, uh, like, uh, date and location and stuff like that. So this, all this tells you is, is like, batch number. Um, you can uh, use it to differentiate... Uh, figs with uh, some success. So, like, if you buy a bunch that all have different numbers, you're less likely to get the same minifig. But it's not guaranteed, because I did that. I got I got 
four different numbers the first time, and I got a duplicate. So, it's not guaranteed. Uh, but it is, it will increase the likelihood that you get a different one. Same thing with getting, with weighing it. Uh, it's not guaranteed, but it will increase the likelihood that you get different ones. All right, Bahamut, thank you very much for coming on out. Have a good rest of your night. But yeah, if you're, if you're lucky enough and, and your local stores have the, uh, um, uh, the large matrix, uh, boxes... Then you can you can scan those, and that's guaranteed. So far, at least. The um, Triceratops lady, as far as I know, no. I believe this shows everything that they come with, other than the stand and extra pieces. Actually, let me go ahead and uh, take a look at the little kid's torso, because it's going to be partially covered up. Pretty cute uh, little little overalls. He's got midi legs as well. Uh, the, the train piece is dual molded. With additional wheels. Which are made of different plastic, so they're... they're Slightly off shade wise, but that's eh, fine. Good hat as well. And the uh, the front of the train is printed with twenty five there. And I believe people have said that the uh, um, the patch that he has, that's for uh, um, if someone has a lazy eye. Um, so that's, you know, more nice inclusiveness. And spare parts, another 2x2 uh, two two radar dish with a 25 print. Uh, black 1x1 one one cylinder plate and a white feather. Yeah, these uh, these little uh, uh, costume pieces are pretty neat. Like, it's a very intricate piece. Cheers on extra parts, indeed. Yeah, I'm always a fan of extra parts. It's a very cute uh, little uh, little train costume and uh, adorable little kid. And nice nice to get one of these hats as well in uh, light blue. It's like it's a its own little toy, yeah. And I imagine you could uh you might be able to uh I don't know, it might be too wide to get um one by two in there. Uh do 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 I don't think I have a one by two spare very easily. I wonder if there's uh, one in this so I'm kind of curious if you could put something in there to make to turn this into like an actual little train. No, that is not wide enough for a one by two brick. All right. Uh, legs are slightly thinner than uh, one by two bricks. So I'm not sure what you could do to uh, attach. Maybe one by one cylinders or something. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Make a mock of that train uh, a little bit bigger than the guy next to it. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, the kid could be like, you know, his dad maybe works on that train, so he's he's like, yeah, my dad works on this train, so we made this uh this costume for me. Also, with the wheels here, he is not going to uh, position right there. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and mark him down. There we go. 
Out of curiosity, would Technic Axles in two consecutive holes work? Uh... Axles would be generally be too long to do much with. Because um, I'd kind of want it to, like, be able to roll. Half pins would work. But again, I think the pin part might be too long. But no. No, the pin would probably work. I'm not sure if that would be enough space going through there. But flip it around, that would work. That would work. There we go. Yeah, so a half pin uh, in there, you could probably uh, um, get something in. I don't know if there's a, a 1x2 round top piece that would fit in there, though. But you could do something else. Alright, so that is minifigs done for tonight. Uh, it, it's interesting that, like, large sheet... The, the older ones were these smaller sheets, and now they've gone back to uh, the same basic dimensions now. Admittedly, it's fewer minifigs. All right, well, let's go ahead and get that there. All right, so we've had uh, three mini uh, two minifigs so far from that box. Um, different ones. Once we get uh, six different ones, we will be moving to the lower register of them. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this set of minifigs. They're they're really really good. And I'm excited to uh, get all of them. Wish the harpy was red instead of purple. I wish it was brown. <laughs> I feel like a harpy should be uh, um, bird colored, not purple. Like should it should be brown, like uh, like most uh, female birds are. It's a little too fantastical. Um, I'm also disappointed that the upcoming Aarakocra in the uh, the D&D one is going to be uh, white. Alright, we are back to the Hocus Pocus. We need two of the 8x16s. There we go. All right, start out with that. One by eight, one by four. Yeah, D and D, um, D and D CMF uh, in September. Like the uh, the May one is going to be space. All of the minifigs are space. Some of them classic space, or like eighties, nineties. Uh, space related and then uh, the September set is going to be uh, D&D <laughs> even <laughs> broke even more now yeah that's how they get you that's how they get you All right, let's see. And one by two here. Licensed D and D, yes. Um, the uh, list of figs is going to be um, uh, Tasha, um, Zas Tom, uh, Strad von Zerovich. And the Lady of Pain, those are going to be, like, the, the named four. There's going to be an Illithid with a, uh, an Intellect Devourer as the accessory. Um, and then seven kind of PC characters, uh, like a Halfling, a Half-Elf, um, a Dwarf, uh, Aarakocra, Tiefling. 
blanking on on uh, a Dragonborn, blanking on the other one. Um, and they're gonna have, uh, you know, just like like this character has a um, dual printed face with two different expressions. They're gonna have a uh, masculine and a feminine print for the the seven um, like PC style minifigs. Well, there is the, um, did, did you, uh, do you remember the, um, uh, the Ideas 50th anniversary thing that they did? Because that's coming, I think, in April. No? Yeah, go check the Lego Ideas. Um, they, they, they did a, uh, a contest for, uh, LEGO 50, the uh, D&D 50th anniversary, and, um, so they're going to be producing the winner as a set. It's like a tavern with a tower and a, a dragon coiled around it. Uh, that's definitely going to have some of the same molds as the CMFs as well. Um, I don't know if there's any... There's no report of it having a, uh, a Mind Flayer. Um, but it does have a Beholder, like a brick-built Beholder. Uh, it does have a big red dragon. Um, and uh, definitely has a Dragonborn in it as well. I never even had an opportunity to use a uh, beholder yet. Sad. I should have my party uh, have to go up against a whole hive of uh, beholders. That would be good. Well, he was in the movie, so that's part of it. Um, you'll notice that they had two males, two females, so that's part of it. So they have Lady of Pain and Tasha for females, and Strahd and Zostom for um, males. And they're all, you know, like, villains. Although, calling the Lady of Pain a villain is a little, little incorrect. Well, some of them would look very, very different than how I would picture them. I don't know. I, I don't know if they've changed Kelvin's look, but uh, I know they changed uh, pretty dramatically uh, Mordenkainen's look. All right. Let's see. That's there. That one is there with a one by two by eight. But yeah, so um, definitely exciting stuff uh, coming. Um, again, some of the uh, the stuff is going to be already in the uh, the 50th anniversary set, like minifig wise and stuff. But otherwise, uh, reports are that at least within the context of what we've seen so far, every single one of those uh, minifigs is going to have new molds, which is pretty exciting. Oh, 
like at least one new mold on each fig. The we haven't gotten to it yet. Um, Tasha is going to let me go ahead and pull out some of these other bags. Tasha is going to have. I might as well pull all these out because we're finishing this tonight. Tasha is going to have a version of this, this piece, the the dual molded uh, um, witch hat with hair. My understanding is that he was, like, only sort of in it. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But, uh, like, not, not like, ever-present uh, throughout the film, but there in the background kind of thing. Nope, no Elminster. I mean, if it does well, I would very much expect them to do more in the future. Like, if it does well, which I think it will, uh, then I do think that it is going to be, you know, like, it could be like the, uh, the Marvel and stuff like that, where it's just... Every so often, you get a series two, a series three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, I would not know where he was in the movie. <laughs> I have just been informed that he was in the movie. Oh, you mean Elminster? Oh, I don't know about Elmin Elminster. Uh, let's see. That is a dark brown, one by eight. You walked in on your brother watching it and stuck around? I mean, I got nothing against it. Not particularly interested in it myself, because uh, it's not going to look like my realms, but... Then again, I did see the original D&D movie in theaters, so, you know. It cannot. It cannot be that bad. All right, flip it over, and we got a brown 1x4 here. Like, that was a bad movie. Shockingly, I mean, like, shocking in how un d, &D it felt. Alright, let's see. A 2 by 4 there, and two one by two plates with horizontal clips. There we go. You didn't hate it? That's all you're getting from me? <laughs> That's fine. I mean, I didn't hate the, uh, the original D&D &D movie either. It just wasn't good. But 
but all that ham from Jeremy Irons. Well, I mean, like, a movie can be bad without being, uh, while, while having some, some good things about it. Like, you know, Jeremy Irons hamming it up. All right, let's bring that up here. And we are positioning it here. There we go. There we go. All right. And slide it right down there. Oh, the first D&D movie is the one you didn't hate? I haven't seen that one either, so I don't know. All right, let's see. More brick bricks. I mean, I, I basically long ago came to the conclusion that... Uh, it seems like most people don't actually like their D&D the way that I like D&D, so, you know? There we go. Oops, that popped out. There we go. There we go. Did you get the top on the uh, chimney there? You like your D&D full of battles and traps? <laughs> Spider web and a big spider right there. And that will clip on there and fold over there. There we go. Alright, bring it back down here. Make a couple cages. D&D is sort of unfilmable since everyone has such radical uh, different experiences of it. At this point, yeah. I mean, there... I, I think that there was more homogeny in some of it earlier on. And certainly there was a, a homogeny to the published stuff early on. Not so much anymore. Like if someone was in a uh, time capsule and woke up from the 80s or 90s, early 90s, uh, and you show them a picture of Mordenkainen they would not recognize Mordenkainen. No, who, who's that? That's that's not Mordenkainen. What happened to his hair? Or 
You're on spring ba break, so you're going to try to build either the uh, Bugle or the uh, Lion Knight's Castle. Here, it will take uh, eight hours, maybe. Lion Knight's Castle is very, very good. Highly recommend it. All right, there we go. And a dark gray. At least list at least uh, 10 FR characters you'd put ahead of Zostom. Well, I mean, so part of it was, again, wanting a current villain, and he's been a current villain, and he was in the movie. How many other strictly FR characters have been a current villain? Like, most of the, the stuff that they've been doing has been older characters, and oftentimes Greyhawk characters, <laughs> retconned into the Forgotten Realms, like Vecna. Zoss Tom at least uh, was around in the uh, the nineties, although it doesn't look the same. Apparently, ball again. Yeah, see exactly. Like, I mean, I mean that's one thing that that gets me is that I don't know if they've had a new villain in D and D in the past twenty years or so. I mean, I guess in. Well, I should say in Forgotten Realms. Um, they did make some changes to, like, Ravenloft, and obviously they've, they've got uh, um, the Xerixis guys in New Spelljammer. Like, I'm not in the new D&D, &D, so, uh, you know, I still play 2nd Edition, and I still play based on 2nd Edition lore, so it doesn't matter to me, but it is just one of those things where I, like, look at it, and I'm like, where's the new stuff? one. I mean, the cartoon doesn't really count because uh, Avenger was basically generic cartoon villain as opposed to an actual, like, D&D villain. Skeleton. Yeah, this is a pretty pretty neat design for him, actually. There was a toy line for the show, yeah. But they're not like characters in a an existing setting or anything like that. Although they did get retconned into the Forgotten Realms. Because everything has been retconned into the Forgotten Realms. Alright, let's actually bend these down there.
Yeah, I did hear about the cameo. There we go. There's one cage. Ground Realms is being pushed as a primary setting in 5e. Uh, yes. Yes. Like, they, they do the, uh, the fact that there's, uh, um, a multiverse now doesn't really matter because everything is still, uh, Forgotten Realms anyway. Alright. Let's get this one hanging here. There we go. And this one hanging... There we go. Okay, I definitely missed some green... Ah, yes, okay. I thought we were going to put some on, and I just missed it on the instructions. So, got one green leaf there, and another one up here. There we go. Alright, spare parts. We got a black friction pin. Uh, tan one by one plate and a one by one cylinder plate with bar in black. Where do they set Pirates of Realm Space? <laughs> it it actually hasn't been. It actually hasn't been. I mean, in in the nineties, uh, Forgotten Realms and in the late eighties, Forgotten Realms was definitely the most popular setting. Yes, but it wasn't as bad as that. Alright, bag number 12, which is here. FR suffers from being a kitchen sink setting. Everything can be there, so everything must. Yeah, well... Yes and no. I mean, it does suffer from that, yes. Um, but it doesn't have to. You know, and even when they do other settings, uh, Ravenloft, Dragonlance, uh, Spelljammer, they either reboot it or, like, completely, like, redesign it from the ground up, make massive changes to it, or just reboot it and, and it's like, ah, we're back to uh, this point. Uh, if they ever did um, uh, Dark Sun, which I kind of don't think they will, uh, the same thing will happen. Although that's already happened once before anyway, so. All right, Seelan, have a good rest of your night. Thank you very much for coming on out. I know nothing really about Eberron. Uh, that, that came out after I was no longer a customer. <laughs> I, I think Dark Sun is too dark in, in that, like, there, there's too much there that is objectionable that you're supposed to fight against, but I, I think it's just 
too much of that for that for them to uh, do to these days. I'm not making a comment on whether that's good or bad. It just that's just what it is. A chandelier, which uh, I like the uh, the use of a ship's wheel for that. That's pretty cool. All right, blue friction half pin. Dark cells. It. It does for smaller uh, companies. I don't know that it would for Wizards of the Coast. I mean, part of it is also the fact that there are there is a cottage industry of people who exist specifically to criticize Wizards of the Coast. It's it's the big one. It's the big target. It's easy to criticize, kind of thing. Another uh, bat on here. They do have a hobby. <laughs> it's called criticizing Wizards of the Coast. It's it's also their livelihood. It is unfortunate, but there is a lot of money in hate. Eberron had uh, elves with good necromancy, successful uh, goblinoid kingdoms. Let's see, so that's going to be four. I don't know, it's just one of those things that, that I think that they would choose to avoid. The material is available, like the old material, at least for second edition. I don't know about the... Uh, Fourth edition? I think that's when they, they did actually bring back... Uh... No, I got it. I, I know what good necromancy is. I just think it's something that they'll, they'll avoid. Why open that can of worms kind of thing? Let's see, that goes right there. Get a one by one here. Your simplistic morality system doesn't mesh well with the morally gray Aethos. I could. If they did it well, but. I mean, I've generally found that when when gaming groups uh, eliminate uh, alignment, tends to end up playing a game that I would not play.
Let's see, we've got this one here, that one right there, and a couple uh, one by ones. PCs tend to become chaotic evil? Not necessarily, but there does tend to be things that I would consider overtly evil acts that people tend to, you know, try to justify. Not like constant, not like the axe crazy, you know, murder everyone, chaotic evil look, but people play their character and it just so happens that they're playing their character in a way that is uh, on its face occasionally evil. Like, uh, um, my niece's partner is running a game, and, like, over either Christmas or Thanksgiving, he was telling me about uh, a problem character he was having, um, a problem player, and, you know, who was making it unfun for everyone else because they were, like, blatantly fouling things up with acts that in my, from my DM perspective, would be considered evil acts. It's the kind of thing that in a second edition campaign, it'd be like um, warning the the player that they're, they're doing acts that are going to change their alignment and continuing on would change their alignment, thus bringing on the, the penalties. And like some of those things are to are there to represent, you know, your character genuinely changing their outlook. But it's also there to prevent you from having players who are just blatantly out to, uh, you know, where where their fun is at the fun the the at the expense of other people's fun, kind of thing. And I was like. Yeah, what that character did was was evil. Like that that that's an evil act. That that in second edition that would bring on these penalties and et cetera, et cetera. And while I don't know if he ended up deciding to implement any of that, he did he was like, I see what that I see what you're getting at. I see where you're where you're where that is uh how that works now. If rules are not enforced, there's no impetus for players to uh, heed them. To a certain extent, yeah. Players who came to claim to be chaotic neutral because the uh, GM won't let them play chaotic evil. Yeah, like that's not. It's not. It's not. Not. Uh, it's not actually uh, chaotic. Chaotic neutral. Like, to a certain extent, there's not really necessarily a big difference between uh, lawful good, uh, neutral good, and chaotic good. I mean, like, there's a difference between um, lawful good and uh, chaotic good, but on that spectrum, it's still a, uh, you know, it's still a spectrum. Howdy, Glitch Hunt, how's it going? So if someone's playing their character and they're lawful good, and sometimes they're, they're, they're acting, you know, something that could be considered neutral good, eh, whatever, who cares? It doesn't impact play. Um, if someone's uh, chaotic good and they occasionally act in a way that might be considered chaotic neutral, eh, whatever. But if someone is going, you know, jumping to the other side, that's eh, a problem. Uh, 
All right, so that is going to be the top. Let's go ahead and bring the uh, camera up here. We started chaotic neutral once, but uh, became at least chaotic good because the other players were more immoral than you. Yeah. And we get a leaf down here. A, oops, I missed a leaf over here. A leaf up here. And a few one by three tiles. There we go. You're an armchair DM with no DM experience, just uh, spouting off what you think should be? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Next up, bag number 13. Like it, it's it's one thing for a character to kind of hew the line and 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 waffle a little little bit between the two uh, on occasion. That's that's actually fine. But when you are like if a character is supposed to be good and they blatantly do something that just messes up the whole story. Like let's say you're supposed to be saving someone and you end up uh, doing an intentional act that you know puts them puts that character in danger and it gets them killed. Yeah, it's, it's you know, pretty much evil. <laughs> pretty much evil. Alright, let's see. Do we have... Yeah, we have two faces on her. I think that's the uh, the Rachel hair from the friend set. And a big old jar of salt. And, uh, you want to focus camera? There we go. Big old jar of salt. It's a cute outfit though. All right, let's see. And one by six. If the party is good, uh, and one character insists on being evil, that character would be booted out of the party by the good members. Yeah. I mean, well, n not necessarily, I should say. Um, like, again, you can have some interesting dynamics between good and evil characters in the same party that can eventually come to a head, and that can be a fun role-playing experience. But you need buy-in. You need to know that that is what you're doing. Like, that is one of the interesting dynamics of the um, uh, Avatar Crisis novels for Forgotten Realms, with uh, the good Kelimvor and the most definitely not good Cyric, where they can work together and and do what you know and, and and get things done and and stuff like that and and work towards their goals um but it eventually comes to a head and that can be a really interesting story to tell in you know in the RPG uh setting of your choice but you need buy in you need to know that that is what's going to happen, or at least if the the game starts going that way, then the players all need to agree that this is this is okay. They want to explore this. 
Because it's really about the fun that people are having. And that's why that's why the the player buy-in is so important. Because if I think I'm signing up for um, for one thing, where you know we're all do-gooders and and doing good, and then it turns out, oh no, that's not what we're playing. I, you know, I'm I'm not necessarily going to be uh, interested in continuing to play that. Sirik once drove himself mad reading his own Serenishad magical propaganda book and almost lost his portfolio. Yes, but that was after he was a god. That's a little bit different. When he was a mortal is what I'm talking about as uh, can be an interesting story to tell. But the important thing is that you've got buy-in from, uh, from all the players. They have to know that this is what's going on. They don't necessarily have to know that the you know what the details are, but you know it's it's really important because everyone needs to have fun, including the dungeon master. Like if the dungeon master is expecting all you guys to be playing you know paladin types, and then um, one of the players decides, no, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be totally and absolutely evil. And the rest of the players are like, yeah, yeah, this is fun. Let's let's keep doing it. But the DM is like, it's not the kind of game that I want to play, you know? There we go. And that is going to go on the other side. Let's turn this around. There we go. And that is right there. There we go. I think I would have uh, wanted this to project out a little bit more and have an overhang, but now you can be evil paladins. Yeah, no, I'm not a, not a fan. Not, I don't, I don't dig that. Like, one of the hallmarks of evil is that evil betrays itself. Uh, it's one of the reasons why, like, and, and that's that's a good reason to not have evil paladins, because uh, evil gods don't want to invest their followers with that much power. Because they don't trust them. <laughs> go another bit over here it's just like a lot of uh it it, it kind of came with like how things are written um where it's like the Spell descriptions and item descriptions are, are second person. It's like, you get to do this, which creates this kind of like... The way you write things is very important for the tone that gets communicated and stuff like that. That communicates a tone of... Um, entitlement, and I mean it as in, like... You know, you can do these things because you are entitled to have these items. And that I was not a fan of. Because it, it sets up an expectation that, that you know, you're going to get these things.
Like I was watching uh, one 5e game where uh, there was kind of like a after action type report. Well, you know, like let, let, let's let's talk about how we're feeling about the campaign at this point uh, after a number of sessions. And one of the people was like, playing this published adventure, we're getting all these uh, items that you know our characters aren't aren't designed to use. It's like. What do you think is going to happen, like, what do you think happens when you, you know, like, you encounter uh, other people out there that, that, because you've uh, decided that you're going to use a, um, a broadsword that everyone you encounter is going to use a broadsword kind of thing, that, that all the powerful stuff is going to be a broadsword for your character to use? I feel that, I find that very, very silly. video game logic. Kind of. It, it's, it's more like, I don't know. I, it, it's, there is this thing where, where things must be tailored to your characters rather than your characters uh, roll with the, you know, the flow of what you encounter kind of thing, what you find. Like, it was pretty common back in the day that, you know, a warrior, you know, he takes a longsword as his uh, weapon proficiency or whatever, but first magical weapon he encounters is a speedum. He's going to be using that thing because it's a magic weapon. He may not be proficient in it, um, but next time he can take proficiency, he takes proficiency because, you know, that's that's the weapon that he has, and that's how you get better in the game. But it's like, so part of it is, is you know, the way that your characters get more powerful generally in old-school gaming is by finding items. Whereas in new school gaming, it's by getting more powers. And that I find a, you know, that's the kind of thing that I don't like. Because it, it makes your character be the, the powerhouse rather than the magic. You don't like wasting limited resources? Eh, it's there to use. Use your scrolls. My characters have so many scrolls that they don't use. <laughs> so many. This is a uh, neat little way to do a uh, porch railing. I'm going to zoom in on this in a second. Well, in those games, because of the nature of the, the game, I, there, there's an element of... Uh, it, it's not necessary to use them, oftentimes, because you can just rest whenever. But in a, you know, and you can know what's coming and stuff like that. You can reload. But in an actual tabletop game, you don't know any of that. So using these horns as a railing, that's a really neat design. I really like that. I'm definitely going to have to remember that. One campaign, you had an easy time taking on Red Dragon because of the uh, random potion results and treasure hordes kept giving us potions of fire resistance. Yeah, no, that's great. I think that's great. 
Like in the Spelljammer game, Braxton has been using a uh, Rod of Lordly Might, um, and it's his primary weapon. He almost exclusively, exclusively, uh, exclusively uses it um, because it's just a, a really, really powerful, really good weapon, uh, extraordinarily versatile, and it was a random treasure result. Then you look in your inventory towards the end of the game and think, why do I have a scroll that heals five health? <laughs> I mean, like, proficiency slots that only ever get so many. But see, that's the thing, is, like, it's not a waste of investment if you use it on that magic weapon that you got. And when you get more powerful, you can always, uh, um, you know, like, commission items if you want to speed them plus five. So this is the sticker, the Sanderson Witch Museum placard. That would go on this sign right there. And we have some stocks here. I mean, I nix results that I don't like and stuff like that, but I am perfectly fine with a lot of results. random random treasure all right let's see I did miss a leaf back here I feel like I have missed a green leaf element as well To ah, oh, yep, there it is. It goes right in there. There we go. Okay. All right. So spare parts. We got uh, one by one cylinder plate in dark gray. One by one cylinder tiles in white and gray. Uh, one by one plate flower in green, one by one uh, brown cylinder tile with top peg, um, a brown bison horn, long bison horn, dark green one by one tile slope, and green and brown three leaf uh, stem plants. All right. So I'll go ahead and bring the uh, camera up here. And. Connect that in. Pick this up so it's a little bit easier to... Whoop. I'll get that back on. There we go. And get the uh, sign back on. There we go. So we get the uh, front yard of the house. Pretty nicely designed. Okay, next up, bag number 14. I mean, sometimes, you know, you got to be cautious uh, about using your, your stuff, and other times it's like, you know, be be prepared and uh, do what you think is best. Um, like, I set up a uh, an encounter for my players that, specifically, it was designed to make them think that they were going to be up against uh, a dragon or a dracolich or something of that nature. It was just an animated skeleton dragon, so it had no breath weapon. They used their uh, their scroll of uh, protection from dragon breath. That happens, you know. Just sometimes you gotta be uh, 
safer than sorry. Because it could have been a Dracolich. All right, so we got a, a trick or treat uh, bucket. Uh, I don't think they've made this piece in orange before. Cauldron. So that's pretty cool. We got shorty legs. A uh, cute little outfit here. If the camera would focus. There we go. There we go. And get the very cool dual molded uh, hat and hair. I love this uh, this piece. So there was a... Um, if the video sets had continued, there would have been a character using uh, this with, I think, some like purple or trans purple or something like that. It's very, very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, I think so. But I love this hat. And this is what we're supposed to get with, uh, um, I think the hat was a little bit different in the uh, unreleased video character, but that's a great, great piece. I love it. Very excited to get more. There we go. She has her uh, trick-or-treat uh, bucket. All right. Let's see. Start out with a 2x8. But yeah, I mean, like, like setting up a challenge for your your players and getting them to use their their resources. That's great. You're sad they didn't have the zombie. I don't know anything about a zombie. Tomorrow's session of uh, Spelljammer, the, the players are going to be delving down another level where they are, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, I haven't seen the uh, original in a very long time, so I don't remember basically anything, so... <laughs> Where's the other one by two with clip? Ah, no, it's not. It's a one by one with clip. There we go. That explains why I couldn't find it. <laughs> All right, three, a two by eights, uh, four by eights, I mean. Hey, it's not like I even knew, so. <laughs> one by eight. One by eight. One by eight. And one by two. Uh, 
All right, one by uh, six bricks. One by one plates. Ah, uh, one by sixes, one by fours, one by twos, and one by ones. Okay, another one by eight here, and a one by two. Get some side stud pieces here. So is everyone happy that the weekend is upon us? You've been far too unaware how awesome Doug Jones was and how many uh, things you'd seen him in until just a few years ago. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been in that. That thing, too. Uh, I, I remember, like, sometimes it's, it's really fun to just, like, look up some, you know, like, some bad movie or something like that and be like, what, that person was in this? Holy cow. Like, one of the actors on uh, Veronica Mars was in the movie Hobgoblins that uh, MST3K riffed on. As a much younger self. <laughs> fun to see uh, famous people in their not-so-famous roles. Another movie that uh, MST3K did, uh, the the sequel to The Creature from the Black Lagoon, um, actually had uh, uh, Clint Eastwood's first speaking role. Alright, so that sticker would be going on to this piece right here. A little display case. Happy that 19 straight days of work and utter boredom are over. Well, congratulations on making it through. Time to go to Disney World, I mean. <laughs> You've just worked 19 straight days of uh, utter boredom. What are you gonna do now? I'm going to Disney World. All right, need a two beige one by one plates and a dark brown one by one plate. Disney World is too expensive these days. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's called a juke. There we go. And get that on there. All right, one by two right there, one by eight. One by four, one by one, and one by two. There we go. Okay, another pair of side stud pieces. One by four, one by six. Get a brick brick here, one by six over here, and a beige one by four right there. And then a one by eight tiles on the edges. A jape, indeed. There we go. 
Alright, dark gray at 2x8. 2x6 with round corners and a pair of brick bricks. I mean, I wouldn't do that unless it was one of those things where I had already planned for it, booked it, budgeted it, and then had to do that work. Or they really paid me very, very well. <laughs> then again, I'm also not that big of a Disney World person. I have been when I was a kid. And it was fine. I like King's Dominion more because I like the rides more. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I tend to forget that uh, Disneyland is a thing as well, um, because it is on the other side of the country from me. <laughs> Wait, and you're tired and confused. Well, land is in California, world is in Florida. Epcot could be fun. Your neck doesn't like roller coasters anymore. Epcot is fun, yeah. Or at least it was when I went, which was, um, at this point, a very, 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 very long time ago. Very long time ago. Did I mention it was a long time ago? I'm not sure if I mentioned it was a long time ago. Alright, so we get the... Where did the bag piece go? There it is. So the bag piece on a robot arm. And a cauldron. When was it? Ages ago. It was in the last millennium. Back before anyone had heard of the amazing concept called breakfast soup. The before times, indeed. Alright, Dark Jade, have a good rest of your night. Disneyland is fun. You think you uh, visited the one in Paris way back in 1995? Feeling the urge to go again? I've not been to uh, any of the overseas ones. I did go to Disneyland uh, when I was a baby, literally. So, uh, I, shockingly, I, I don't have uh, much in the way of a memory of it. <laughs> Alright, so we get the... Uh, the Big ol' fireplace in there. There we go. Okay, and... Black dome lights on top of telescope pieces. All needs to go to the Dragon Quest theme park. Totally would if I could afford it. The likelihood of me ever being able to afford it is um, pretty minuscule. It's pretty minuscule. Alright, so this is the, uh, the 
hourglass piece from the uh, dream set, but it has a different uh, color. It's set molded in different colors. I can't remember if... I, I think it was, like, trans orange, or maybe it's clear and there's a... Uh, like, trans gold and... Uh, not trans gold, but, but, like, gold in there or something like that. I can't remember. But the... Uh, it's definitely different colors for the uh, the dreams uh, hourglass. Oops. There we go. So this would have. 17 printed on it, or uh, a chair with that decoration on it. I mean, I've seen pictures of the uh, Dragon Quest theme park. It does seem pretty cool. But I'd have to go to Japan for that, and I don't think I'm going to have the money for that. <laughs> there we go. And that goes right there. Okay, I feel like I have definitely missed a part. Where does this, uh, brick brick go? Gotta go on the underside here somewhere. Yep, right there. There we go. Alright. Uh, spare parts. We've got uh, two, which uh, means that this should be tan. There we go. Alright, so we got two handles. One in uh, tan, one in black. Uh, black robot arm. Uh, dark gray ski pole trans-orange uh, flame piece, uh, black 1x1 one one dome light, uh, brown 1x1 one one cylinder plate with hollow stud, and a dark brown 1x1 one one plate. Just need enough bits, new bit goal? Yeah, that would be, uh, be a thing. Classy backstool, aka chair, yep. Oh, actually, I got them wrong. That's the one that's supposed to have black, and that's the one that's supposed to... Well, whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm not gonna... <laughs> I'm not gonna pull that, that out to correct that. It's just the handle. Alright, last pair of bags. Fifteen. We are almost done. For that much money, you could buy a lot of Lego. That's true, too, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do like Lego. I do like Lego. Alright, so let's make the... Other minifig. There's his head. Where's his hair? There's his hair. There we go. I like that the uh, the torso has no um, like it's it's not printed with the color the skin color skin tone on it. So that you could use it for regular minifigs if you uh, swap out the hands. OK, 
Okay, focus. Focus camera. There we go. Alright. Pair of 2x2 two two slopes here and here. 6 brick. Two uh, one by two log bricks there. And four one by two tile slopes. Kind of want this. You have too many expensive sets to worry about this year. This year. Uh, nowhere to put it, and while you like the movie, you wouldn't even say that you're invested in it, but the set looks really neat. It is really cool. And it's uh, it, it's got, on top of that, like, um, good stuff for uh, both, you know, for, like, anything medieval or, or old-timey, if you want to go for um, some mocking in that way. You know, you could use this as, again, a build, you know, parts for a, a pirate-related uh, building, if you're going for some, some pirate-related sets, or castle, all kinds of good stuff. Love your castle lines, yep. Castle, so good. This is a very big fireplace. Barador in the uh, medieval town square, the uh, two big sets on your radar. Yeah, the the town square is is really good. I'm I'm really excited to build it. Uh that is what we're going to be doing next week as well. Cuz I got that one. Had to get that one. I love this chimney just, like, being one step lower than the, uh, the roof line. Where is the gray 2x2? Two two? Did I know? Oh, gray, two by two. Am I just tired and not seeing it? Yes, I am. I thought it was a... I thought it was a... Uh, another... Just a one by two brick. It's, it's literally like this, and, and I could not see the back slope. <laughs> These on there, there, and there. Medieval village set from before, this town square, the castle joust, the blacksmith, yeah. Good stuff. I'm still kicking myself for not getting the original goat. Get these in here. Uh, this way. <laughs> the original goat. The mill raid attack set. It had a goat in it. It was the only set that had a goat until this year. I am the original goat. A different goat. I'm the greatest of all time. I'm not a... Uh, an animal, a horned animal, 
that likes to uh, knock people off stuff. Well, I think you'd know if you had a goat. Right, yeah, no, the, the, so the new CMF has a goat, and the new uh, Town Square has uh, the goat. But that earlier mill raid attack set had a goat in it as well, and it was literally the only set that had a goat. Until now. Okay, that, that's over my head, Kincher. Did it also have a barn and a cow? Uh, I don't remember. It had a horse. I think it had a gray horse. Which I think was also the only... One of the only gray horses. A dappled gray horse. had a windmill. Oh, I need two of these. Oops. Alright. Let's do the second one. I wasn't expecting these to be exactly the same. The game Broken Sword had an awful puzzle involving getting past a goat. Ah, I have not uh, played that, and while I have seen other people play it, I don't know it very well. It's been on my radar to potentially eventually play, though. I do remember some of the puzzles feeling very obtuse, though. You do have a goat. Well, if you have two of two goats, then they should be the exact same. Because there's only been one set before this year that had a goat. And there was only one. Broken Sword, Assassin's Creed before Assassin's Creed. Get some brown boat studs on here. I mean, that's what made the, uh, um, the town square so exciting, was because it had a goat. That was before we knew that the, uh, CMFs would have a goat. Two goats, three tree. Oh, right, it did have two goats. That's right. Uh, I think the cow came in the other um, Market Square set. I think that's where that the, the cow came from. I think that was the first set with a cow. Could be wrong. That's awesome that you have that one. Uh, I, I'm i still kicking myself for not getting it. I don't know that I'm willing to spend the money that uh, it would cost to get a uh, complete one. Collectible minifigs. Or collectible minifigures. These guys. Come on, get in there. There we go. Eh. 
And there we go. All right. Double set of plates here. Two by four peak slope. Yeah, so far there have been 25 uh, generic series and then um, quite a few licensed ones. All right. Get that in there. Get a pair of four, uh, two L axles right there. Pair of black friction pins here. Two Disney, two Simpsons, two Lego Movie, one Lego Batman, one Ninjago Movie, uh, two Marvel. Um, I think there's actually two Batman, or there was DC or something like that. There was also a uh, German football and a British uh, Olympic one. I'm trying to remember what else there was. Um, I don't really have many of the licensed ones. There's Harry Potter ones, two Harry Potter ones, I believe. No Star Wars ones because that uh, infringes on other licenses for um, action figures. Like I'm, I'm surprised that Lego has not managed to finagle some way of getting a Star Wars CMF line out. I mean, they have other ways of getting figs out, but still kind of shocking. Pumpkin right there. Dark green vine right here. And that connects in there. Okay, clip with uh, a vine. There we go. Get that right in there. Uh, dark green vine here. Green vine down here. A dark green vine over here. Four pigs, uh, two pink, one beige, uh, one beige with spots. Well, I got a, I have a, a large number of uh, four more uh, pink pigs from one of your VIP packs. Yeah, I have. Uh, um, I think it's medium nougat is what those pigs are. Um, I got a bunch from Lug Bulk, and I got a bunch of uh, cows from Lug Bulk uh, many years ago, too. Alright, so a black uh, uh, friction pin, a 
tan one by one plate, black one by one tile slope, and a brown bar with clip as extra pieces. And this is going to connect in to this side of the building here. A lot of sets have, with pigs tended to have two. There we go. Okay. Let's pull that out. So we can lift up the roof to uh, look inside, which is pretty cool. I uh, can't really do that on the other side. This opens up as well to look inside. Not that it's easy to look inside right now, but let's see what I can do. I can light up the uh, the fire underneath the cauldron. Close that up there. Knock off a plant. It, it feels not like the the ground is not as uh, sturdy as the um, as a blacksmith. The blacksmith shop is a, feels much sturdier on the bottom um, because it, it's it's not set up with all these uh, parts that come on and off. But uh, you can turn the water wheel to cause the uh, flames in the uh, chimney to go up and down. Turn it around this way. Look at it from another angle. So it's a pretty neat little uh, movement bit. Back there. Get our front gate out. Kind of neat how the chandelier moves slightly in the build. Yeah, it's because it's just hanging there. And we have all of our minifigs. She's going to stand. Oh, yeah, there, there we go. All right, so that is the uh, the Hocus Pocus house. It's a good set. Definitely, um, like, would stand well beside the, uh, the blacksmith shop. Uh, it's a similar, very similar size and um, uh, shape, uh, similar build style as well. Um, I would probably make some tweaks, like if I was going to use this in an actual uh, layout with the blacksmith, I would definitely make some tweaks to the design, uh, depending on what my goal was. But uh, um, yeah, it, it's really, really good. Uh, I highly recommend this for, for that. The cages were cool. Those were great. Uh, the way that those were designed, yeah. I like the stocks here, even though you can't put a minifig in. It's nice to have the stocks. Um, I, it's very simple, but I really do like the uh, the way they handled the um, this curved uh, railing by the uh, the door. So very cool, very cool. Um, I would recommend it to anyone who's a fan of the show. I'd recommend it to anyone who wants uh, another building to go with the blacksmith. It is too big size-wise to fit with, um, like, the uh, the Market Village or the um, uh, the Town Square that just came out and the Lion Knight's Castle. Like, this 
Like, the Lion Knight's castle's big, but it's still, like, you know, just up here kind of thing. Uh, making this house feel very, very big. You want smaller buildings to go with that. Um, the the so-called Lego selective compression. Uh, but it does have a lot of really good pieces if you wanted to uh, build some stuff to go with that. Um, so it has that that advantage as well. But overall, um, I would like I, I think I'd want some plates along here to to better hide the um, you know the, the the look of the tiles there I'd probably want something along the top but you know and same thing I'd want this to, to come out on the side a little bit but overall it's it's good it's very good put it next to the Eiffel Tower the Eiffel Tower dwarfs everything <laughs> the Eiffel Tower dwarfs everything I can't put the Eiffel Tower on a table. It has to go on the floor. I did see someone trying to get rid of an Eiffel Tower, uh, a built Eiffel Tower, be basically saying, I want to get rid of this thing. Because <laughs> it's really big. Like, it's a great uh, model. It was uh, really interesting to build, even if uh, a lot of it was repetitious. Um, it's very impressive to see it put together, but it's also really hard to put someplace. Because it's, it's four feet tall. Like, where are you going to put something... Four feet tall. Your brother has a small Eiffel Tower. He has a minifigure uh, keychain hanging from it, you believe? <laughs> but yes, that is going to uh, wrap us up tonight. Uh, next week, we will return with the uh, town square, the medieval town square. Uh, I did get it in. Um, I'm excited, super excited to build that. That is going to be really fun. That is going to be a set that we will be putting the stickers on, too. So, you know... If that's what you're here for, me badly putting on stickers. You got that in the cards. We will be back uh, tomorrow. You wanted to say something about the town square? Yeah, go ahead. Bring the camera down a little bit more so we can see the, uh, the fencing. Something your uh, brother noticed and pointed out to you uh, that you were both stoked? Uh, yeah, one of the minifigures, uh, is Wolfpack, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, that's great. Hopefully that, that, um, torso will make it into, uh, Pick a Brick, too. So we will be back tomorrow for some more Spelljammer. We will be back on, uh, Monday for more Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. We'll be back on Wednesday for more, uh, Monster Rancher Advance 2. Uh, Lego building in the evening, something else entirely. Uh, Friday, I will not be back for Final Fantasy VI. Uh, I am going to be busy that morning, but I will be back uh, Friday night to start the uh, Medieval Town Square. And Duke Darkwood, uh, Wolfpack is like one of my most common minifigs, uh, because I got a case of the Wolfpack Renegades cart uh, damaged from Potomac Mills many, many years ago, like over 20 years ago. It was like 36 of them. It was great. So I, I have a lot of Wolfpack. <laughs> I have a lot of Wolfpack. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of the uh, Fright Nights uh, characters, too. A lot of them. I got a bunch of that stuff on discount, too. Potomac Mills back in the, the day was amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Just tons of, of damaged boxes, because it was an outlet store. They shipped it from all over. I got... I got um, uh, nine, uh, like, four and a half volt train tracks boxes. It was cool. You playing Miss the Fright Nights? Some of the minifigs were good. Some of the sets, most of the sets, not so good. I didn't really, you know, but... They need a wolf pack set with a wolf. Yeah, they have not done any. They have not done any any normal wolves. There, there's some like there's wargs and there's uh, some other stuff, but that's about it. Anyway, that is going to wrap us up tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, Hocus Pocus house. Have a good night, and I will see you guys next time. See you then, everyone. <laughs>